Let's talk about my ex. Excuse me, my exes. <laughs> oh, man, people been hitting me up, and I've been seeing it. My ex is out there tripping. <laughs> oh, Jason Whitlock, Emmanuel Acho, my guys. They're always going to be my friends, even if they get mad at me, but they know me. I talk about everybody with the same amount of truth. And if you my friend, I really talk about you because we the homie. You know me better than them. <laughs> uh, let's talk about what's going on right now because this is the thing. You can't Google their names without me popping up. Oh, pretty fat face image of me. Hey, buddy. Oh, man. And vice versa. Like you Google their names, here I go. Hey, buddy. <laughs> right? Oh, man. But everybody hits me up publicly and privately as well. Right? Ooh, I can, ooh, ooh. I know so many famous people <laughs> that be hitting me up talking about, what's up with your boy? What's up with your boy? They ain't tweeting that out. <laughs> and we go there. Oh, man. Let's talk about it. Because my last four years at Fox, I took strays for my boys. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they took strays from me. Everybody didn't like my Black Lives Matter, uh, what do you call that, uh, response. <laughs> But you know me, I don't come with hate. They only say I'm a hater because I tell the truth too early. That's the only reason I get called a hater. And not everybody like my Colin Kaepernick's takes and still don't. But if you listen to me, I have so many people come up to me when I'm in public. They be like, man, I used to hate your ass, cuz. I'm like, why you? <laughs> How's this conversation going? I used to hate you, homie. I used to hate your blood. I'm like, what? And then they be like, but I, I start listening to you for real. I hear you. I hear you. I feel you. I'm like, Okay, we good. Like, I don't come from hate, man. I just don't. I come from real, though. But my co-hosts have taken strays for me before, as I'm taking strays for them right now. God dang, y'all calm down. Let's talk about it. Um, Van Latham, another one of my boys, but not a co-host. I've been on his podcast before where we had an uncomfortable conversation. We went there. And I didn't shy away from it. He didn't shy away from it. We didn't beef. We still talk on the phone, in person, go to each other's parties, et cetera. That's discourse, right? That's public discourse and private homie talk. Like, dog, I'm not about to lose my friend over some conversation. And if I do, wasn't the right conversation, obviously, right? Like, we're talking about things outside of us. And we're having a conversation. So Van Lathan interviews Emmanuel Acho. Let's start with Acho. And that interview just, Van wanted to go in and Acho wanted to get out. That's the simplest way I could say it. Get out. And, I, and Van was like, I'm going in. And that's what that was, right? And I'm like, okay, but you can't go out. You can't get out. You got to stay here because you're there. And Van's like, I'm going in and I'm coming in hot. Van was in goal line defense, even on the 50-yard line. He was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. And Acho was like, yo, I want to play finesse ball or, you know, just call timeout. And the way I felt watching it, I was like entertaining, but God, they left a lot of meat on that bone because Acho wasn't a willing participant. He said, uh, I wasn't prepared for this, you know, the publicist notes and what were you really supposed to talk about? Yeah, but, right? The but is, Acho is an orator. That dude can talk, talk. And he's smart. So, he could have figured it out. <laughs> like you, First of all, I don't even do that. But Acho's a brand. He ain't like me. I ain't got no whole team, like, give me every question or what we gonna talk about. You can tell me what we talking about, but I don't give a damn what you say. Whatever you ask, I'm gonna answer. Because it ain't that hard. I'm sophisticated, right? And if you're sophisticated, Acho's sophisticated, get through it. But don't be dismissive. And I thought that was bad because Acho could have, he could have played Van's role up and still got what he wanted out of it and then dipped and then they wouldn't have this beef on Twitter now. But they have this beef on Twitter now. <laughs> and I'm all in it, right? And so I'm sitting there seeing tweet after tweet and I'm like, damn, that's funny. Oh, damn, that's gangster. Damn, I want to like that one. And then I was like, Got to do it. <laughs> Got to be me. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's between them. I'm not picking a side. I'm just going with where the truth takes me, right? But I'm sitting there. I'm like, damn, why didn't y'all do this when y'all were in front of each other? But 
Acho probably felt like Van, you overcommitting to one thing in these uncomfortable conversations. Van's like, I'm being authentic. When you ain't here, I hate on your ass. When you here, I'm coming in and I'm going in. Acho is like, all right, I wasn't prepared for this. So I'm not going there. But I wish they would have went there because if anything is an uncomfortable conversation with a black man, it is two black men having an uncomfortable conversation, right? One Nigerian American and one Van Lathan, whatever you want to call him, a Louisianian, <laughs> right? They should have went there. Damn, why are people so scared these days to go at it? We learn from that. That onion makes you cry, but boy, them layers, mm, you got to peel them back. They tasty, man. That's the, that's the right seasoning and the right spices you need to go beyond these meat and potato binary conversations we keep having. But that was interesting because I know everybody got caught up in that and I got obviously part of that wash. Um, I'm not taking a side. Um, Van went there. Emotional Butler is gangsta. I should. I wish I had that as a Wileyism first. Um, Acho handled himself with class, you know? But sometimes, and I, I'm guilty of this, that high road shit ain't for everybody, man. Funk that. <laughs> like, tell that fool what you feel. Like, I'm classy too, but I guess the root of class is ass. And I'm going to show you my, you showing your ass, I'm going to show my ass. Acho should have showed his ass because I think he could have had a better conversation. He came out of that. Now y'all lighten him up. And I don't think that's appropriate, but I think he asked for it. When you don't want to go there, you know what they say. You keep your mouth closed. We're going to assume. And they're going to make an ass out of you and me. So. And they making the ass out of Acho, and they trying to throw me in it. Trust me, I know what y'all doing, and I know why y'all feel that way. But my other co-host before, um, Jason Whitlock, another one of the guys that privately is the homie. I know y'all don't like Whitlock, some of y'all. I know a lot of y'all love Whitlock. Trust me, I get both. <laughs> so if you don't like Whitlock, you don't get all the love Whitlock gets because you don't like him. And the algorithm is rigging it for you. And if you love Whitlock, then you don't know how many people hate him, probably. Or you do, because Whitlock always talks about it. But the algorithm is rigging it for you, too, right? Giving you more of what you want. Keeping you in your echo chamber. Ding. Message. I'm in the middle of it. Because I'm like, I agree with this. I agree with this. I agree with this. Watching Fearless. Oh, man. Why he say that? Why he say that? Oh, that was dope. But why did he say this one? He blamed uh, the death. Mm. How do you blame a death for Tyree Nichols on baby mama culture, single mama culture, right? And those are two things getting conflated in this moment. But I know what he's trying to say, but you shouldn't have tried. Um, and more importantly, you shouldn't have said it right now, I think is what people were saying. It's kind of in that Skip Bayless moment of like, uh, is this the time to say it? And is this appropriate? And don't term it single mama, baby mama. Because it's absentee father. <laughs> and where's daddy? Instead of like, you know, like bouncing out. But that's my boy. I can't lie. I know y'all don't like him. Some of y'all. Oh, well. Um, I'm going to listen to him every single time. And I'm going to give him his respect when necessary. Um, this moment caught me in some, some strays. Caught me, you know, shrapnel hitting me. That's your friend? That's your boy? No one agrees with everything I say. So I hope I don't agree with everything they say. And if I do, and if they do, we ain't friends because we don't exist. Keep it real. But whoa, y'all lighting his ass up. <laughs> lighting him up. I couldn't believe it. It was wild, too. I listened to the interview. I was like, ooh. But who doesn't have I mean, if you say enough words, make enough comments, me, I got. I stepped in it before too, so I'm looking at this situation like, yeah, Whitlock, you did too much on this one. Um, it's it's just a conflation, you know. Like, there are great kids from single mamas. They're great. Like the culture at whole, we got to fix the nuclear family, y'all. We got to fix family, fix the family, fix the future. He knows Whitlock and I know we on the same page with that. But that doesn't mean when things go awry, you blame one parent and actually the parent that's doing the more responsible thing even though they may fail in that moment they're even more responsible than the absent one who certainly is setting that kid up for failure 
So I get where he was trying to go. I get his heart in that one. But boy, not only bad timing, but bad summation. Um, I don't think it applied here, but that's how the game goes. Um, my two dogs, love y'all. And when I step in it, sorry, <laughs> they going to light y'all asses up too. Uh, but y'all bringing out receipts now. Got Acho from Jimmy Kimmel. Acho tomorrow, he learned black culture in college. Now, this is where I'm like, yeah, light them up. <laughs> you learn black culture in college, and a decade later, I guess you're a 10 year old basically in black culture. You're 10 years old in black culture. You're you're leading the uncomfortable conversations with a black man series. That's when people really like, dog, I don't think you're qualified. And I know he's not qualified to do that. But me and him had a private conversation that I'll leave private, but I'll give you one of the nuggets I dropped. Hopefully he picked it up. I was like, dog, you're not curing racism. So I wouldn't profess, I wouldn't address, and I wouldn't dress up yourself as someone who may cure racism. Um, you may be moving this ball forward, but don't fumble. Um, that's all. But look, it got him where he is. It helped him pop. And his intentions are pure. Mm, pure in this sense. <laughs> I mean, look, you got Oprah with you. It's big business too. But um, it's pure in this sense. He really means well. That's why Van kept apologizing to him. He knew the dude came from a good place. But he was like, you come from a good place. But boy, your ass done landed in the wrong place. <laughs> mm. And in case y'all like, damn, Wiley don't give a fuck. No, I actually do. That's why I talk about my friends as well. This is my mantra, two ways. One, I played ball my whole life, including in the NFL a decade, right? I got paid. I had a job. I had a passion to translate the sport, which included talking about players, talking about the game, talking about the locker room, telling y'all stories. I also broadcast for 20 some years. So I got a passion for it, which is telling y'all about the broadcasters, <laughs> the people, the culture, the shows. So since I played ball, I could talk about ball and the people involved. Since I broadcasted, I could talk about the broadcasters and the people involved. Not a hater, y'all. I just tell the truth too early. <laughs>